Batman vs. Superman was released in 2016. It was the second film from Zack Snyder in the DCEU, continuing his Man of Steel story and introducing The Batman. Stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Jesse Eisenberg, Amy Adams, and Diane Lane. It's the Dark Knight vs. the Man of Steel as after the destruction done in Metropolis due to his fight with Zod, Batman, threatened by Superman's existence, believes that the Man of Steel has to be stopped at all costs. So when this movie was coming out in 2016, I remember the big buzz around this. It was finally Superman and Batman on the big screen. It was gonna be this epic duel of these titans. And everyone was so buzzed out of their mind to check out this movie, including myself. As you can see, I was there opening weekend. I even remember that this was coming out very close to Captain America Civil War. In fact, Captain America Civil War and Batman vs Superman were gonna open on the same day. And I remember there was this big thing online was like, ooh, who's gonna cave first? And it ended up being Batman vs Superman. They pushed their release date. And as I walked out of the movie theater after experiencing Batman vs Superman, my initial response to the movie was, that was, that was okay. Which bummed me out a lot. Like a Batman vs Superman movie, the first time we're seeing Batman and Superman in live action was just okay. That was a bummer. But now a lot more time has passed to look back on this movie. It had actually been a couple years since I watched it. So going into this movie, I tried to go into it fresh as if I had just finished watching Man of Steel for the first time and then I was gonna watch this movie for the first time. So what sticks out the most about Batman vs Superman? It's probably the thing that stuck out the most the first time I saw it in theaters. It's the Batman part of Batman vs Superman. I know in my Man of Steel review, you guys probably think that I'm really dissing the Henry Cavill Superman character, and I'm really not. I don't hate Henry Cavill as an actor or his performance in Superman. I just don't really find his Superman that interesting within these movies, especially when you put him next to Ben Affleck's debut as Batman. Ben Affleck came out swinging with this portrayal as Batman. The beginning of this movie, I think, is absolute genius. We see Bruce Wayne on the ground as the fight from Zod and Superman is happening. We see it from a different perspective, Bruce Wayne's perspective, and we really see the anarchy, the chaos, the destruction, the casualties, and the loss that Bruce Wayne is experiencing through Superman's fight with Zod. And Ben Affleck's performance, even when he's not saying a word, he is so good at introducing this Bruce Wayne. You understand this Bruce Wayne so well and where he's coming from for the rest of the movie. When he's hugging that little girl after she lost her mom in the building and he looks up at Superman, I mean, that look that he gives to Superman and Zod fighting in the air, that's all you need to understand. Yeah, this guy... This guy has some has some bad feelings for Superman. Furthermore, when I was watching this movie, I really felt like I was watching a Batman movie. This movie really gives a lot of focus on Batman. I would even say that Bruce Wayne is the main character of this movie. We really spend a lot of time on his investigation, his motives and feelings towards Superman. And it's really fun to actually see Bruce Wayne in this movie do some detective work because Batman's supposed to be the world's greatest detective. I like seeing Bruce Wayne in this movie investigate. I like seeing him go into the field without the Batman suit on as he's just Bruce Wayne. And he tries to get information out of people and about people just as Bruce Wayne. And the Batman action sequences in this movie, oh my, Goodness, are they so much fun. They're so thrilling, they're so exciting. When he's chasing down Luther's thugs, when he's trying to get the kryptonite from them, until he eventually literally runs into Superman, which we'll talk about that in a minute. To, of course, the gold standard of this movie with the Batman warehouse fight. This fight in the warehouse against Luther's thugs is so raw and so brutal. It is Batman unleashed, and I love every second I get of it. While we're talking about newcomers, I guess I should talk about Gal Gadot as her debut as Wonder Woman before her solo movie. This was where she got introduced into the DCEU. And Gal Gadot, in her introduction to Wonder Woman, I actually, I think she's pretty good in this movie. I don't, I didn't remember her very much when I saw this in theaters. I think I kind of wasn't aware that she was Wonder Woman or I didn't really know the Wonder Woman character yet because I hadn't seen the movie. So I just kind of like forgot about her a little bit. But when I was re-watching her back in this movie, she stuck out a lot more to me. I thought she did a really good job and when she does appear on screen in that Wonder Woman outfit, I was like, oh yeah, it's Wonder Woman. I think the biggest praise I can give to Gal Gadot in this movie is that it didn't feel like this was her first time playing Wonder Woman to me. It felt like this was Wonder Woman, like this could have been the movie after Wonder Woman 1984 and I would have been like, oh, this is a continuation of that character. And as I mentioned before, this does feel like it's trying to be a Batman movie to me. This is essentially though, at first and foremost, a follow-up to Man of Steel. And that's kind of where my shortcomings of the movie come from. I feel like when it comes to the follow-up to Man of Steel, this movie kind of drags and doesn't work as well. I watched the theatrical cut because that's what I saw in theater, so that's what I wanted to watch again. So I know the Ultimate Edition has more in it. And I have seen the Ultimate Edition, and I do think that the extended scenes in that movie do improve the movie. I really like 
watching Clark Kent investigate the Batman more by actually going to the citizens in Gotham and talking to them firsthand. But this movie throws a lot at you. This movie has a lot going on and at a lot of times Batman vs Superman feels very unfocused to me. When it comes to being a Man of Steel sequel, it seems like instead of being a Man of Steel follow up, this movie feels like the Man of Steel sequel stuff is just trying to sneak or like wedge itself into the movie because whenever we go back to Superman and he's watching the news and it's all political, do we need a Superman? All these questions about what does it mean to have a Superman in this world? And Superman is battling internally if he's doing good or if he's just making things worse. That stuff isn't bad. I actually like that stuff a lot. It's one of the things I liked about Man of Steel. I liked seeing the political and socializing side of being like, okay, there's aliens in the world now. How do we react to this? How do we respond to this? I like seeing that and I like the little bits we get in Batman vs Superman, but it's so little and it comes and goes so fast. It almost feels kind of pointless to put it into this movie. Speaking about pointless to put into this movie, let's talk about Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. I love it. I love bringing people together. Now, I don't want to hate on Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, and I'm not going to act like I'm the... I know all about Lex Luthor. I, I really don't. I've seen him in Superman the movie, and... Was he in Superman 4? Yeah, didn't he make Nuclear Man? But other than that, my knowledge on Lex Luthor forget about it. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, he's very eccentric and when he first pops up in this movie, I really feel like he's like channeling Jim Carrey kind of energy. But honestly, that stuff doesn't bother me that much and I actually do think Jesse Eisenberg gets some pretty good moments in this movie. I love when he's on the rooftop and he's telling Superman about how he has kidnapped his mother and he wants him to go fight Batman or else his mother's gonna die. I think he gives a pretty good performance in that scene. And on a side note, I love seeing Superman's anger and rage come out in that moment because as we know from Man of Steel, you don't mess with Superman's mother. But the thing about Jesse Eisenberg in this movie is his Lex Luthor is kind of similar to Batman. He sees Superman as a threat. Not so much, maybe not so much as a threat, but he hates Superman. In this movie, it seems like Lex Luthor just hates God. And since Superman is the closest thing to God that he has found, he hates Superman. So he tries to get Bruce Wayne's Batman to fight Superman. And he's supposed to be like the puppet master behind the whole thing. Very similar to how like Zemo is supposed to be the mastermind behind Cap and Iron Man fighting in Civil War, which these movies came out the same year at the same time, so that's interesting. But just like how I feel about Zemo in Civil War, I really don't feel like you need Lex Luthor in this movie. Batman already had a great motivation to not like Superman, and we already understood why Batman didn't like Superman. It's not needed for Lex Luthor to push him over the edge, so to speak, as he says. And there's just things that in this plan that Lex Luthor has, it doesn't make any sense within the movie. He knows when Batman is going to plan to fight Superman, so he kidnaps Lois Lane on that day. He has a thug pick her up at the train station, bring her to the rooftop, bring Superman there just in time for the bat signal to go up so Superman can fight Batman. And essentially the only reason why Lex Luthor is in this movie is so that he can create Doomsday so that when our heroes become best friends, they have something to fight together. Which, speaking of which, let's talk about Martha. So I guess before we get to Martha, there is the Superman and Batman fight, which the Superman and Batman fight in this movie, it's like an hour and 15 minutes into the movie. If you watch the Ultimate Edition, I think it's like two hours into the movie. But when it goes down, it's fun. It's fun to see these characters fight. It's fun to see Batman basically kick Superman's butt. But Superman gets a few hits in there, but for the most part, it's pretty one-sided. Batman really destroys Superman in this fight. It's like 10 minutes long, but every time that the movie gets to that part, or if I just look up the clip on YouTube for fun, I do always have a fun time with this fight. Until eventually it ends because Batman kicked Superman's butt. He's got all the kryptonite gear and he's got him down on the ground and he's got the kryptonite spear and he holds it up over his head. He's just about to stab Superman until he says, Save Martha. And that strikes a chord with Batman because we learn that Batman's mother's name was Martha, who also got killed. And after Lois Lane runs to Superman's side because Amy Adams is Lois Lane just has to be there. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about Lois Lane's role in this movie. She has this like bullet because she's in Africa and she's doing some journalism thing against a terrorist. She gets captured, Superman comes, completely kills the guy to save Lois. And then it's like this big political thing that Superman killed a bunch of people in Africa and she's got a bullet from the from the massacre and she's going to the CIA and the FBI and investigating this bullet and she finds that it was made from Lex Luthor's corporation and Lex Luthor set up the guys in Africa 
to kidnap Lois Lane. See what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, Lois comes to Superman's side and says, it's his mother's name. And Batman throws his spear and now he's best friends with Superman. Now, I can get behind the destruction in Man of Steel. For me, it's fun. And if you're going to have these two godlike characters fighting, you're going to have destruction. I can get behind Superman breaking Dodd's neck. It was almost like a forced hand kind of scenario. So I can get behind that. But Martha, I just, I, it's dumb. <laughs> I can't defend Martha. It's dumb. Batman says himself that if there's even a 1% chance that Superman could be their enemy, that they have to take it as an absolute certainty. And I think the Martha scene is supposed to be where Bruce finally sees Clark as a human. He sees his humanity and he connects to him on a human level. But when you have Batman so set on his mind, he believes that killing Superman is the greater good for the whole world. To suddenly have Batman flip on a dime because their mothers have the same name. It just doesn't work the way I think Zack Snyder intended for it to. It feels very abrupt. It's more jarring than Anakin's turn in Revenge of the Sith. Like, it's just like Batman's like, I'm gonna kill you. Your mother's name is Martha? Come here, buddy, give me a hug. But if one good thing did come out of the Martha scene, it's that warehouse scene from Batman. Once again, <laughs> so awesome. Oh yeah, and this movie sets up the Justice League. <laughs> so as if this movie didn't have enough in it, we get so much set up for Justice League. We get a dream sequence from Batman where he's like fighting these parademons and he has this vision of Darkseid coming. And it's almost like an apocalyptic world that Superman runs. All the army soldiers that are fighting Batman in this dream sequence, they have Superman's S on their shoulder. And even when Batman gets captured, Superman comes down and they bow down to him. And it looks like Superman's gonna kill Batman. Then Batman wakes up from this dream sequence to the Flash who's coming back from the future telling him that he was right and that Superman was bad and that Lois is the key. So then Batman wakes up from that dream. So he has a dream inside a dream, wakes up from two dreams. And I guess the Flash can travel into dreams too? He can travel to the past as well as in dreams? And when Batman steals Lex Luthor's files, he finds out that the character Gal Gadot was playing was Wonder Woman. He finds her picture from the first Wonder Woman movie, and along with that, he finds a bunch of other clips of the Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, and we get a moment where the movie halts. It's a trailer for the next Justice League movie and all of their spin-off movies to come. We see the Flash in the grocery store stopping some robbers. We see Cyborg being created. We see Aquaman coming out of the water. As he super song booms his way across the sea. And then Lex Luthor creates Doomsday. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman fight Doomsday. And Superman sacrifices himself in order to kill Doomsday. And then we have a funeral for Clark. Batman tells Wonder Woman that they have to find the others that were on the files. The dust rises from the coffin and the movie ends. I feel like this review started to go all over the place but basically Batman vs Superman I think is a bit of a mess I don't think it's great I really enjoy the Batman stuff and when Batman and Superman do end up fighting I do think it's pretty fun the little interactions that we get of Batman and Superman throughout the movie like when he first runs in literally to Superman and the Batmobile bounces off of Superman's legs and Superman rips open the doors and Batman stands up. It's a gorgeous shot. It looks awesome. When it comes to Zack Snyder movies, you can't knock the way that they look. And this movie's no exception. This movie has some really fantastic shots and some really cool imagery. But I think when it comes down to it, there's just too much crammed into this movie. The movie feels unfocused, cluttered, and it's just hard for me to really get engaged when it bounces around to all these different storylines so fast that there's really no time to simmer or enjoy one single story line in this movie because as you're getting into one you're directly bounced into another and as you're just about getting into that one you're bounced to another and the justice league setups i do feel are a drag on the movie i really hope that in zack snyder's justice league this batman dream sequence and the flash coming back in this vision will finally make sense and we'll have a conclusion and resolution to it but as it is right now it really feels like a waste of time Batman vs Superman is not one of the worst comic book movies ever made, but in my opinion, it is one of the most disappointing. Anyway guys, those are all my thoughts and opinions on Batman vs Superman. I know I rambled and went all over the place on this review, but there's a lot to cover in this movie. What did you guys think of the movie? Comment down below, let me know. I wanna know all your thoughts and opinions about this movie. Guys, thank you again for joining me for another DCEU review. As for your leading up to Zack Snyder's Justice League, it comes out at the end of next week. So be sure to come back next week, subscribe so you don't miss it. I will be talking about the theatrically released Justice League before Zack Snyder's Justice League is released at the end of next week. As always guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking out my channel. Once again, my name is Zachary Milne. Thank you for talking movies with me and I hope you have yourself a great day.